Hello, welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks, and today we're dividing fractions. Now, dividing fractions is actually really easy, but you do need to know how to multiply fractions first. So if you're not sure how to multiply fractions, go and watch the fractions multiplication video, and then come back here. So we'll look straight in with an example. We'll have 4 sixths divided by 8 ninths. Now I'm going to let you into a little secret here. It turns out that you can't divide fractions in maths. You just can't do it. But some clever mathematician bloke a few hundred years ago discovered that you could actually turn a division into a multiplication. Now a lot of people ask me why you're allowed to do this and I'll try and explain it at the end of the video but for now just suspend your disbelief and follow it through with me. What this chap discovered was that you can change a divide sign into a time sign as long as you take your second fraction and turn it upside down. So 8 ninths would become 9 eighths. Now it's a multiplication and we know how to multiply so you can just do that in the normal way. So the way you divide fractions is you don't divide them at all. You change the divide into a times, take the second fraction and turn it upside down. And then you just follow all the normal rules for multiplication. So I'll just do this quickly. Always try and cancel first. So the 4 and the 6 are both divisible by 2. So 2's into 4 go 2. 2's into 6 go 3 times. See if there's anything else that will cancel. Remember you can cancel diagonally as well. So the 3 and the 9 will cancel. 3's into 3 go once. 3's into 9 go 3 times. And the 2 and the 8 will cancel as well. So 2's into 2 go once. And 2's into 8 go 4 times. So now we've got 1 times 3 on the top and 1 times 4 on the bottom. Remember when you're multiplying fractions, you just multiply the tops and you multiply the bottoms. So 1, 3 is 3. And 1, 4 is 4. So 4 sixths divided by 8 ninths is 3 quarters. So it's very straightforward. I know this can look a little bit messy, but actually doing it in practice is quite easy. And you can do it very quickly with the cancelling um, when you're used to it. So that's essentially the method. Just to reiterate then, you change the divide into a times, take the second fraction, must be the second one, and you turn it upside down. I'll just show you one more example. Because uh, sometimes mathematicians like to throw in mixed numbers on these kinds of questions. And there's a very important rule you need to remember with mixed numbers. So let me give you an example. We'll have four and a quarter divided by two and a half. The rule is you can't do maths on mixed numbers. You just can't do it. So don't even try. If you see mixed numbers in any kind of fraction question, the first thing you need to do is turn them into top heavy fractions. Sometimes people call them improper fractions. If you're not sure how to do that, you can go and watch my video on converting between mixed numbers and top heavy fractions. Um, I'll quickly run through it now, but I'll do it in detail in the other video. So you need to convert this mixed number. It's a mixed number because it's got a whole number bit, the four, and a fraction bit, the quarter. We need to convert it into a top heavy fraction. So you, the whole number bit multiplies on the bottom. So four times four gives you 16. And then you add the number on the top, which gives you 17. And the number on the bottom, in this case the 4, never changes. The 2 and a half we need to convert into a top heavy fraction as well. So 2 2 is a 4, plus 1 gives you 5. And the number on the bottom never changes. So as top heavy fractions, 4 and a quarter divided by 2 and a half would be 17 quarters divided by 5 halves. Now we can do the question, we can do the maths because they're not mixed numbers anymore. And the way you divide fractions is you just turn it into a multiplication. So leave the first fraction alone, 17 over 4. Change the divide into a times. Take the second fraction, it must be the second fraction, turn it upside down. So 5 over 2 becomes 2 over 5. Now we multiply in the normal way. So see if anything cancels. Uh, well, 17 is prime, so nothing's going to cancel with that. Uh, but the 2 and the 4 will cancel. So 2 go into both of those, 2's into 4 go twice, 2's into 2 go once, I don't think anything else will cancel, so 17 times 1 on the top, and 2 times 5 on the bottom. So the final answer here is 17 tenths. 
Now, at this point, some people like to convert this top heavy fraction, because the number on the top is bigger than the number on the bottom, back into a mixed number. Now, it's a bit of a, an interesting one, this. You can't do math on mixed numbers. So actually, in maths, if this is your answer and you're going to use it for anything, you don't want to convert it into a mixed number, because you can't do maths on mixed numbers. You want to leave it as a top heavy fraction. So in general, in maths, you always want to leave your answers as top heavy fractions and not convert them back into mixed numbers. However, sometimes the question will specifically tell you to leave your answer as a mixed number. So you can't stop there in that case and you would then have to convert this into a mixed number. Again, you can watch the converting between mixed numbers and top heavy fractions video to see how to do this in detail. But essentially you divide the top by the bottom, 10 into 17 goes once, remainder seven, and the number on the bottom never changes. So 17 tenths is one and seven tenths as a mixed number. But as I say, most of the time you don't do that. Only convert it back to a mixed number if the question asks you to. Often if the question starts off with mixed numbers, it will ask you to leave the answer as a mixed number. But if it doesn't say anything, don't do it. Leave it as a top heavy fraction, because that's in practice in maths, that's much more useful than a mixed number. So there you go, that's dividing fractions, uh, normal ones and how you deal with mixed numbers. So now I'm going to try and explain uh, why it works. Why you can just turn the divide into a times. Now this is a little bit tricky and a lot of people find this somewhat unsatisfying, but I'm going to do my best here. If you just wanted to know how to do it, now you know, you don't need to watch the explanation, you can just carry on. Um, but if you're interested, this is why you're allowed to change the divide into a times. So I'll go back to the first example we had. Uh, I think it was 4 sixths divided by 8 ninths. So, again, you're changing the divide into a times sign. The first fraction you don't mess with. The divide turns into a times. You take the second fraction and you turn it upside down. So the 8 ninths become 9 eighths. Now, I just want to look at this turning the fraction upside down thing first of all to try and explain what's actually happening there. Um, if you had a number like 12, for example, and you were timesing it by 8 ninths, what this actually means is that you're timesing by the 8, but then you're dividing by the 9. The fractional line means divide by. So you're not actually timesing by the 8 and timesing by the 9. If you're timesing something by 8 ninths, you're timesing by the top, but you're dividing by the bottom. So if you take this fraction and you turn it upside down, if the 8 ninths becomes 9 eighths, now instead of timesing by 8 and dividing by 9, you're actually timesing by 9 and dividing by the 8. So you're doing the opposite. The 8 which was multiplying is now dividing, and the 9 which was dividing is now multiplying. So you've made these into the opposite. By turning the fraction upside down, you're doing the opposite operation. Now when you turn the divide sign <coughs> into a time sign, you're also doing the opposite operation. So this, turning into a time sign, makes your sum into the opposite, but turning the fraction upside down also makes it into the opposite. So you're making it into the opposite of the opposite. And that gets back to where I started. Let me try and explain that. If I have a simpler sum here, let's say we have five minus two, obviously that gives you three. Now if I change this into the opposite, then I'm making it into a, the minus into a plus. And this is obviously not true anymore. But if I then change it again to make it into the opposite of the opposite, well, the opposite of adding is subtracting. So the opposite of the opposite is just back to where you started. It's the thing you had in the first place. And it's exactly the same with this. This will still be true if I use the opposite of the opposite. And again here, if I change the divide into a times, it's the opposite. But if I flip the second fraction, it's the opposite. So I'm making it the opposite of the opposite. So this must be exactly the same as the thing we started with. Great! What does that give you for your money? Well, if you're wondering what the point of all this is, remember, we don't know how to divide fractions. So changing the opposite of the opposite and ending up with something that's got a multiply sign in it instead is great for us because we know how to multiply fractions. So that's what's going on. It's the opposite of the opposite, which in a rather tricky way allows us to do the division because 
it just becomes a multiplication and we know how to do it. So hopefully that's given you some idea of why this little trick works, but it is just a trick at the end of the day, uh, and a very nifty one at that. So hopefully that's given you the tools you need to divide fractions. My name is Jonathan Hicks and you're watching Teach Me Maths. Welcome to Teach Me Maths, my name is Jonathan Hicks and today we're doing... <laughs> what are we doing? We're doing division of fractions is what we're doing.